going to start with um, I'm going to start with Devi. Okay. Um, you, how old were you when you saw it? It was about five years ago. Um, so I was twelve. <laughs> no, it was I was in my <laughs> yeah. late twenties. Yeah. What, what did it? Uh, what did the film do to you? It's a very haunting film. It's actually. Uh, so it's were you prepared when you saw? Like, did you know the film? Did you know what happens in the film? Or yes, did you just of course. No, I, I knew, and I'd, I'd pretended to see it my whole life. I've always said okay. yes, yes. When people say, "What are your favorite films of Amma's?" and I'd say, "Yes, Apur Sansar and Devi." And um, and at some point, I, I thought I should. So I think I saw it when I was shooting Antar Mahal actually, because wow. I was shooting with Ritu Da. Yeah. And uh, there was a particular frame that he wanted and he said it's very reminiscent of uh, Devi and Devi. I said yes of course of course I've seen it and I said really, I really <laughs> should see this film um, and then I saw it and it was uh, remarkably like that and my whole get up yeah. in Antar Mahal was very much like my mother's I saw Devi. Antar Mahal because I you know from whatever I got from the promos it reminded me of Devi right and that was the idea yeah, yeah. Um, and it's sort of similar yeah. uh, you know in ways to that yeah. and so why did you say that it was your favorite film I, even before you saw it, was it because your mom really likes it, or is is, is that something? Is was that an instinct? I have a, a lot of times I have an instinct about movies. I know, don't I have a favorite film, and I was yeah. thinking actually for a very long time what my favorite film is because I generally don't have favorites as a yeah, person. But what, yeah, but but when favorites. I think of films, and I was really thinking of cinema that uh, has affected me in a way, and I think it's both Apur Sansar and Devi. And it might be uh, because my mother is in the film because mm -hmm. it moved me to an extent which I thought was quite silly uh, yeah. because there were lots of frames that I was just getting very sort of emotional about and mm -hmm. I'd find myself in tears and like Apur Sansar as well just because yeah. I was seeing my mother mm -hmm. who's, you know, 65 plus yeah. now yeah. and seeing her when she's 16 or younger yeah. than that yeah. and you know it's just uh, that's what's wonderful and about very cinema emotionally it captures charged. these yeah. beautiful yeah. images that are permanent and yeah. last forever. Did you ever discuss Devi with your mom? Did you ever, um, you know, Devi is one of those films that that goes beyond the images. The images are very powerful, but it's also about a lot about interpretation. I mean, there was so much said about this is what it's about and then Ray rubbished a lot of those theories. Mm. And of course, once the film goes to the US, then it becomes about, you know, Freud comes in and a whole lot right. of stuff happens. But Ray rubbished a lot of that. But did you ever discuss it with your mother? Did you ever... You know, we've you never... Uh, really talked about it though we plan to now because we're going together to Boston next month mm -hmm. and we're talking about uh, we're going to Harvard and we've been asked to speak about intergenerational cinema mm -hmm. especially women in cinema through yeah. the ages mm -hmm. and uh, sh they're going to be screening Devi mm -hmm. for her and I think for me they're showing Khoya Khoya Chand and Rangde Basanti. Mm -hmm. All she told me I remember when it came to actually performing the scenes she said that she was uh, you know, she got a lot of appreciation for her work in those films, but mm -hmm. she was just saying how heavily dependent she was on um, Ray and how she was so young and didn't know anything and she just stood there and he would say lift your eyes and it creates through light and camera and all of those things, uh, music, uh, really sometimes there's very little for the actor to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, even when, when I was watching Nayak also and how he says we're mm -hmm. just, you know, I mean, is when it comes to the difference between cinema and theatre yeah. and sometimes actors are just puppets and, you know, you don't have to do very much, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But what about that last scene? I mean, I'm sure that last scene... In Devi. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, I think, uh, because again, when you see so much conventional cinema, Bollywood or otherwise, you sort of know when a film is going to end. Yeah. And uh, I didn't know that, you know, when it was going to end. And yeah, the end was sort of yeah, almost yeah. sudden and, yeah. and, and yeah. suddenly it, it's all over. Yeah. Uh, and then you're kind of left to also think what exactly has happened. Yeah. Uh, and it, yeah. so it stays with you. Yeah. And I, I didn't, I mean, of course, I mean, I'm not a student of cinema. I'm just, uh, you know, playing certain roles. So for me, things like the performances and of course seeing my mother in that film were far more important in the story. I, I like to lose myself in the story of yeah. a film without really, I've never even thought about until again I started, uh, you know, working in films about what kind of shot. And I remember someone saying, oh, it's, a, I saw a film recently a young filmmaker called Anand Gandhi. I don't know if you have been... Yeah, like, yeah. Huh? I've seen his short films. Continuum yeah. and, and uh, so right or wrong has, it's half an hour and I didn't even realize that it's just two shots each yeah. of 15 minute length. Um, so I'm still sort of, I mean, I just watch it mainly for whether the story is, you know, um, sort of envelops you or not. But that's nice, right? I mean, the fact that you can still, you can relate to cinema in a pure way and you're not filtering it through... Um, technical jargon that, yeah. that you know what I want to know is if are there any moments do you have how do you remember cinema when wh how what is your memory of cinema like is there is there a when someone says Devi you know what's the first image that will come to you uh, I would say lots of um, these silences and close-ups again I suppose of Amma um, scenes and shadows uh, 
the music, um, and again, just sort of black and white images of so much that is said and communicated in such a, I mean, I, seeing it, I suppose, uh, now in 2011 when it was made, you know, so long ago and having seen so many films that, you know, we've got such wonderful technology today and we're making all kinds of films and seeing it now as opposed to then and still feeling that it is in so many ways so superior and so completely yeah. different to anything that I have seen. Um, and of course people must have said that about him then, uh, but I, th I still think it holds true today. How would you describe the feeling it left you with? Um, I think a, a sense of sadness, yeah. uh, essentially, and um, you feel it's such a waste, you know, this whole family mm. um, that falls apart. And, uh, and it's just, it's, it's very sad. And also, of course, being quite disturbed mm. um, by what happens to her internally. Yeah. Uh, and I, I suppose especially that scene with her sister-in-law and her, um, where, because I would relate to the sister-in-law's character as someone who doesn't buy into any of this at all. Yeah. And of course, I mean, the husband, yeah. but uh, especially the sister-in-law and, and, you know, when her uh, child is dying, yeah that kind of confusion I think that it creates and that kind of really I mean she'll do anything to yeah. save her child yeah. and it raises all sorts of questions and when it comes to things like religion and spirituality as well I mean I've, I've you know uh, grappled with that myself yeah but some people seem very sorted yeah. and some people have the answers and I almost you know envy them because yeah. once you have the answers whether you're right or wrong there's you know a sense of peace yeah. that comes from that and I feel like I really don't have the answers and I'm quite fearful yeah. and quite scared by what will happen you know after I die for example so yeah. when it comes to things like that I um, it's it's very disturbing for me yeah yeah tell me something uh, you know we, we discussed this earlier that you don't get technically affected by films in that sense but um, t tell me some uncanny ways in which you've uh, been affected by films you know when we were younger you know because a lot of what I thought we would talk about today as well, um, I mean, this all started with, you know, when I, what kinds of films I watched growing up. Yeah. Um, and there would probably be lots of musicals. We didn't watch a lot of Hindi cinema growing up at all. Mm. In fact, at all. Um, and I was probably more exposed to the kind of cinema my father saw mm. uh, in, even when I was young, like whether it was something like Guns of Navarone mm. or, you know, um, lots of war films mm. and then lots of uh, musicals whether it's Singing in the Rain which is always mm. a favourite or Chitty Chitty Bang mm. Bang or things mm. like that and Audrey Hepburn was always a favourite mm. maybe because she was my mother's favourite or mm. there's a lot of uh, again glamour and romance and magic and mm. I think it was probably Roman Holiday um, that you know it certainly made me want to visit many parts of Europe and of course Rome especially when she says in um, towards the end when she's in the press conference mm. and uh, of course being diplomatic, uh, you know, and she's asked sort of what has been the highlight of her mm. her trip and she's saying every country has its, you know, mm. uh, and then of course she stops halfway and says, but Rome, you know, is my favorite. Mm. Um, and I thought that, of course, I mean, as a scene was something that always stayed with me and as a young girl and, you know, being romantic and all mm. of those things and love and things that can't mm. happen. And then, of course, the idea of Rome. So this, I mean, the idea of Rome and things like, you know, bicycle thieves and lots, yeah. I mean, having yeah. never been to Rome at that stage or having never understood what it would be like, you know, to be in whatever post-war Italy. Mm. Uh, it's t as I suppose, you know, like, I think it was Martin Scorsese was saying what it's like, I mean, he would never understand what it would be, it would be like to be a young boy in, mm. you know, Apur Sansara, yeah. Femno Pathir Panjali, yeah. you know, growing up. But you get such, I mean, cinema can communicate so much. Yeah. So similarly, I suppose, you know, um, uh, an exposure to parts of Europe, which I've, uh, you know, now since have been to. How, um, how do you pick the films that you want to watch? <laughs> Are you very moody? Are you, yes. you say, I feel like watching? Yeah, but I generally always seem to want to watch thrillers and suspense. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I, uh, and the, the times when you feel like watching a film, or I, tend to watch a film mainly because I want to wind down or I want to not think about certain yeah. things or I've had a busy day or to lose myself basically. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's definitely certain times when I want to watch something that is more lyrical or more poetic. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of the times where I want to watch something that is, you know, very driven by a plot and most of it is sort of like the whodunit kind of Hitchcockian 
Oh, I, that, that I really liked uh, Ritu's uh, um, remake of the, the which I haven't track. seen. You haven't no. seen. No. Yeah. Has it uh, has it changed? I mean, since you became an actor and became an active part of the film industry, it, has it changed your m a movie viewing? Um, do you do you enjoy it less? I mean, because that's in a sense you're surrounded by. My my um, what I watch has probably changed because I watch a lot uh, of Hindi movies now, which I didn't earlier. Um, most of the time because I'm completely embarrassed by other people and they say how can you not have seen Munna Bhai uh, you know if you're which I still haven't seen <laughs> you know if you're you can't be uh, an actor working in Bombay and not have seen really? Munna Bhai or not have seen you know so many films that I haven't seen and I really feel like I haven't uh, missed out so much surely um, but you know ultimately I'll get around to it maybe or maybe not I haven't really felt a need to as yet so that that would that would be that <laughs> but would But I have seen work. lots of films that I maybe would not have seen if I wasn't working in this. In five years ago, and until I started working uh, in Hindi movies, I would you know there were very few Hindi movies that I'd seen. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, um, I'm it's it's a good thing that I'm watching more now. Of course, you, sometimes you watch lots of films and you say, what was the point of that? Yeah. But sometimes you do watch films and you say, you know that was. Uh, did you uh, did you watch a lot of uh, stuff from the 50s and 60s as well? Um, when I was doing Khoya Khoya Chand. Um, I oh, yeah, uh, yeah. thought that uh, I should again. Um, so this is, I think those are the wonderful things about being uh, an actor is that you get to one. Of course, you feel like through I need to do this for a role and yeah. I need to watch certain yeah. films. Um, so then, of course, Sudhir gave me a bunch of films to watch from An to Sahib Bibi Gulam and uh, Mughal Azam and all of that. And I was completely terrified by all of them and saying, "My God, you know." And to have to, he said, "Oh, we'll start off with a kind of." Uh, you know, um, Vahida Rahman becoming a, you know, Madhubala ending up a Meena Kumari kind of, and I was just saying, what? <laughs> no, no, let's just, let's just be Soha, <laughs> you know, like, let's just. Yeah, you know. but you know, it, that might have been fun, right? I mean, coming to a point and then discovering the cinema because it's such a treasure trove, at least that period yeah, of cinema. Absolutely. And everyone says the well, 50s was golden age yeah, and all of that. Yeah. Although someone was telling me, you know, 30s for women was much better i don't know i could i could watch meena kumari and uh, but i haven't seen uh, a lot of the uh, again i would what i so what i want to do now before we head off next uh, next month i don't know how is to is to see at least some snatches of uh, some of the films in the 30s which were apparently truly um, you know about strong women i think again your sort of female actor in those times were truly larger than life and yeah. that there were I mean there was so much about language and diction and dance and singing yeah. and doing everything yeah. for yourself as yeah. opposed to relying on playback artists now yeah. or you know um, even in Khoya Khoya <laughs> I had a few uh, writing lessons that didn't go so well. <laughs> Did you ever have a crush on an actor growing up? Not a Hindi film actor. That's excuse me. My you. long time crush was you know someone like Johnny Depp which remains today. Um, when I was very young, um, the Pierce Brosnan of the Remington Steel series. Yes. Very suave. Which died with Thomas Crown Affair. Yeah. Oh my God. And there's the Tailor of Panama. Have you seen that? No. And it was buried then. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, he plays a very that. nasty character in that. I don't know why. Um, is there any f uh, cinema that you're ir like irrational about? Is there, was there any kind of actor that? Um, that you would defend and say, no, this is really good, or I, I would watch everything of this person, or um, any s film that you like that nobody likes, you know? Uh, oh, you mean like a, a film that? Uh, I again, I've never been, I've never got so. Um, I think I'm more of my father's child that way. We've never been. It was never sort of very cool to get so involved or to get so swayed by most things and that was what I had to unlearn when I started working in films because even things like um, I was taught not to get too excited about anything or not to get mm. too expressive about anything whether you're upset or whether yeah. you're um, uh, happy you mm. know you don't wear your heart on your sleeve yeah. at all yeah. um, and that's my father's school of thought and his yeah. my you know his mother mm. so even watching films it was you know I mean I certainly had like there were actors that I liked, mm. um, um, you know, and even your young actors and, you know, Johnny Depp's, etc. But I would never get, so I was never like that. And my literature teacher in school used to tell me that I had trouble empathizing. Mm. Um, and, and then we did, uh, I did literature for my A-levels and we did Tennessee Williams' Streetcar Named Desire. And she mm. said, I think that you should play Blanche. And, you know, maybe if you enact it, it'll help. Mm. 
uh, and it did. I got a D in my mocks and I got an A in my exam. <laughs> so maybe it helped. But she uh, she said one of your my mother used to say in our letters and my letters mm. my letters were very funny uh, and very factual, mm. but you know kind of clinical. And my sister's mm. letters were very emotional and and lots of feeling. Mm. Um, and I think that's just the kind of person that you know I am. Okay, let me. Th you you would. You earlier told me about Mississippi Masala. Yes. You know, you, were, you almost did that film. Yes. And that could have been your first film. Actually, I thought about it more carefully since, and my first film was when I was uh, a little baby. I forgot the name of the film. I was about three months or four months or maybe. I was less than a year. Uh, and it was a film called Duryan. Yeah, it was a film called Duryan that my mother was in. Uh, and uh, she holds a baby in her arms, and that was me. Okay, I will discount that. I'm okay. I, I doubt it. That's an IMDb <laughs> either. That was my, my debut performance. <laughs> right <laughs> after this, go correct your IMDb entry. <laughs> I shall, yes. <laughs> but, um, yes, but Mississippi yeah. Masala was offered to me uh, when I was 12. Mm. Um, and I managed to get three months of permission to leave school. So you were to play I auditioned no. and everything I was supposed yeah. to play. Yeah. Uh, and there was my stellar scene was on the bus uh, mm. when, you know, they're being um, evacuated from Uganda and all of that. And I have to pee. Um, and she's holding her pee and then, you know, finally I think she doesn't need to pee anymore. Mm. Um, so I did that scene, I think, with, with Mira and she was like, oh, you know, there was some potential in you. Uh, and so I was supposed to do that film and then I fell, I was running with my dog and I had buck teeth and I tripped over Baco and uh, I didn't break my teeth but I was in danger of breaking my teeth because they were little protruding. And so I had to have braces. And so I had to play someone who was 10 uh, and I couldn't have braces because you haven't lost all your milk teeth, et cetera, et cetera. So mm. I lost the role. But it was important for me to get braces. Did you feel bad? Do you remember? Yes, mm. because I, I mean, I wanted to be in a film as, uh, you know. Um, Why did you want to be in a film? Because it was cool. It would have been cool to be in a film. And, uh, you know, none of my classmates were. I mean, I'd seen my mother growing up uh, and I knew that it was, I thought at that point it was a glamorous profession and it would be fun to try. I mean, I never, up until I, you know, it's still a bit of a misfit for me working in cinema. Um, it's my third profession uh, and I, you know, I don't know how long it'll last. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I wanted to try it. I thought it'd be fun. Uh, certain films start to remind us of a certain era in our life. Certain films start to, for whatever reason, you know, it could be a boyfriend, it could be the, um, like Lost in Translation reminds me of a certain uh, era in law college in England and you know I mean uh, to the extent that in my head Lost in Translation is an, is an English film you know do you have any such films do you have any such memories where, where, where films become like a marker of a, a, a point or a uh, I don't know I haven't really thought about it but I mean uh, I know my college going years were formative for me uh, and lots of films where, you know, films like um, whether it's Dead Poets Society or whether it's mm -hmm. Love Story uh, or films that are, you know, of a college kind of theme, uh, you know, I remember watching those, are, you know, probably around that time or actually when I was probably in school. Um, and then, uh, but I don't know what you mean by random. Um, my sister gave me a lot of baseball films to see because I broke my nose playing baseball. So that it was, was like a league of their own. <laughs> that I'm, was I'm a not lot sure that's of sweet, but okay, that's <laughs> twisted sweet. But I mean, it was a specific uh, yeah. film watching relating to life, uh, and she thought maybe it would heal you, help me. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. You'll have to ask her why. But I watched, uh, you know, a lot of, um, you know, the Kevin Costner film, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of baseball films at that point in my life. I have seen some. Uh, I love horror and thriller, um, not the gory, slashy yeah, kind. Yeah. I've been told about those, but I've seen more sort of Ramu type. Uh, well, we were like 20 of us uh, ran away from school on my 16th birthday to go and see JFK when it released because it was in theatres. Uh, and we ended up seeing Basic Instinct um, instead, which was only about an hour long because most of it was cut out in Chanakya Cinema in oh, isn't Delhi. In Delhi. Mm. Oh, okay. Okay, my final question is going to be about actresses other than your mother about watching actresses and now as an actor did you did you learn, did you go to acting school ever <gasps> no no um, i my only uh, exposure to acting was doing every school play 
um, and some amateur theatre in Delhi. As in, like, I did some. Yeah. Um, I think it was the Mermaid one, where I played the witch, Little Mermaid, um, and. Okay, so you played the the witch. Okay. okay. It was so a musical. I had to sing, and I can't sing. So I've never had any acting experience. Uh, I've never been to acting school. I've, I recently did for a film. I did, I think, one of the only workshops I've ever done, actually, as an oh, actor as well. Nice. For Winds of Change. For the adaptation <laughs> of my <Yeah>. The <laughs> Winds of Change. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you insist. Yeah. But, um, uh, um, no, but, okay. So, give me actresses moments that that you feel that you feel really inspired by. That that uh, you know maybe it's not you know, every time I, I, I you know like the, when it comes comes to. Uh, I mean, I have loved Bahida Rahman and, and Madhubala, Meena mm. Kumari, etc. I mean, you know, today I like Vidya Balan. Uh, in some films, I like Kangana. I think that she's, mm. um, you know, tends to play women on mm. edge a lot, mm. but she does it really well. Mm. Um, you know, I think that there are, I think actually there's a lot of talent out there that is not being tapped by mm. our scripts and by, mm. you know, the films that yeah. we make. Yeah. Um, so. You know, and I feel constantly frustrated by the fact that I haven't done so much that I want to be able to do. And yeah. lots of people say, oh, you should write, you should produce, you should, yeah. but I mean, it's, it's yeah, you know, I not mean, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I mean, so a, a lot of that, but you know, when I've, and I watch, um, uh, and what I appreciate a lot about certain performances I've seen is things that we don't focus on, things like intonation and yeah. voice. Mm. Uh, and when you see someone like, um, uh, Debra West Prada. Mm, Meryl Streep. Yeah, Meryl Streep. I mean, not, not that that's like a yeah. but I mean, more recently I've seen that. Uh, you know, or oh, she's. Yeah, she's, she's uh, you know, yeah. Faye Dunaway, and you yeah. know, I was watching I'm not an actor and I want again. to be her. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, and she's consistently brilliant and consistently different. And, um, and my mother gave me a very good piece of advice um, when it comes to, I think, commercial cinema. She said, you should look up, like, the, act, the camera is like a a boy that you have a crush on. Uh, so, you know, when he's in the room, you're completely aware of where he is. Uh, and you may not, you know, so you'll naturally give him your best profile. Um, and you'll, you know, be aware that, and make sure that he hears everything that you say uh, and registers it in the most aesthetic way. But you won't look at him directly. You know, That's you know. nice. So it did, I mean, uh, when I was, you know, uh, I was this young girl, it made sense to me, it completely like struck a chord. And I said, oh, yeah. Her input is, is very good and she's given me lots of good advice when it comes to performance. Final question, what keeps you excited about being in the movies right now? I'm not very excited right now. Uh, well, you're going on, you're carrying on. I'm carrying on, yes, I'm carrying on. Yeah. Um, uh, so what makes you carry on? What makes me carry on is that there's always hope. <laughs> uh, and I have, I mean, there's so much that I want to do and it's incredibly frustrating. Uh, and these are conversations that all of my actor, director, yeah. you know, friends, and we all sit around and talk about, you know, how uh, very, very rarely does a good film come along in this industry, and where's the, all the good writing, and you know, all your mainstream actors, none of them know how to act. Everyone stars, mm. nobody's actors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Talent is number six for a female actor in this country on a long mm. list of requirements. Mm. Number one being, you know, how pretty you are, mm. and you know, how well you can dance, and yeah. you know, all of that. Uh, and most of the films that I've been a part of are, you know, in that middle range between, uh, you know, you have a sort of wonderful low budget film like Udan, yeah. which doesn't have any, you know, stars in mm. it, uh, but is made on a shoestring budget, or you have a huge film. Yeah. Um, and uh, the films I've tended to do have been in the middle, which now people are, I, I believe, are going back to making, but for the past couple of years, yeah. uh, that had kind of, in post recession era, yeah. uh, a lot of those films won't be made anymore. So that was worrying. Um, but uh, I am hopeful. I, I'm constantly being told that things are changing. You know, so I'm hopeful and also slightly secure in the knowledge that, as I said, it's my third profession. I can always do something else in case you know there is no hope anymore. But, but I'm still hopeful. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>